Alrighty, folks, we're about to begin a new chapter. Today we're going to start chapter two, which is all about motion. And motion really has two large branches. Those are kinematics and dynamics. And in this chapter, we'll be doing a little bit of both. Um, chapter three is really going to focus more on, on dynamics. And of course, we'll get to that um, next week. So Kinematics itself is the study of motion. It's it's observing how things move, where they're going to go if they're already moving. Dynamics is more about how motion changes. It's whenever you have changes in motion, a change in direction, or things speeding up, slowing down. Um, but anything that involves change usually falls under the, the definition of dynamics. So since we're talking about motion today, I wanted to go ahead and open up with a question. Are you moving? And of course you probably are suspecting the answer has to be yes. I mean, um, you're sitting there in your chair, but you know, maybe you're breathing, you know, maybe you're fidgeting. Well, that's not really the type of moving I'm, I'm discussing. Of course you're moving on those small levels um, as long as you're alive, which I hope, hope you are. Obviously you, you couldn't be watching otherwise. Um, but I really mean, are you are you moving in in space? Is your position changing? That's really what we're going to start defining as motion. Um, and as you probably suspected from the get go, yes, the answer is you are indeed moving. And we can look at it on so many different levels. Um, so, for instance, the Earth is spinning on its axis, and that spinning causes motion on the surface. Um, quite a bit actually, uh, about 500 meters per second is how the position of the equator or any person on the equator is changing. That'd be equivalent to like a thousand miles per hour. Quite, quite a great speed or velocity. We could take that even further. The Earth also is orbiting the Sun and it does so at about 30 kilometers per second. Um, that's a lot of ground to cover every second. Put in into terms of miles, um, maybe a slightly more familiar unit, like 20 miles per second. Um, I always joke that uh, my my house is you know a little less than 20 miles from from campus. Um, it sure would be nice if my commute was you know only one second. Um, that's that is how fast the Earth is moving around the sun. Um, and it gets even crazier than that, and we could really go on and on and on. Um, but let me just take it one one more step further. The sun, which the Earth is gravitationally bound to, is orbiting the black hole at the center of our galaxy. And that is at a whopping rate of 828,000 kilometers per hour. Um, now, none of these figures are really pertinent to what we're studying other than that they deal with, with motion. I'm not going to test anyone over these these facts. They're fun facts, but um, I don't expect you to memorize them for this class. Uh, but the point is, you don't necessarily feel this motion. And the point is, it's because of your reference frame. We really see and interpret motion as relative motion. Uh, you look around yourself, and whether or not things are, appear to be moving sort of is what you define um, as, as motion for yourself. When you're in a car, you look out the window, you see things flying by. Um, and that is how you kind of determine that you are moving. Um, if you were in a car with no windows, it would be a lot more difficult to tell whether or not you were moving because your frame of reference, the, the walls of the car around you, are moving right along with you. Just like we're moving right along with the Earth as it spins and as it orbits the Sun, and as the sun goes around the black hole, those things are all moving with us. And when something's moving the same speed as you, you actually don't notice that it, that it is moving. Motion is actually relative. You have to find a fixed point and say, how am I moving relative to that? Which brings me to one of my favorite physics jokes. So, um, you know, set down your drinks before you do a spit take for this one. Um, bar walks into a man. Oops, oops, wrong frame of reference. Hardy har har, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's always gets lots of laughs. Um, anyway, let's move on, and let me, let me ask you another question. When we're talking about motion, 
and relative motion, you know, you're, I said you have to pick a point and see how you're moving relative to that. Um, well, then that begins us uh, on the, the journey of defining where that thing is or where, where we are relative to it. Um, so when you answer the question of where are you, it, it, it actually might be a little more complicated than at first glance. So, you know, typically I'm teaching in our regular physics classroom, which is Omni 158. And there's a little bit of information buried in that name alone. Um, if you were to, you know, call up your, your mom, dad, brother, sister, best friend, whomever, and try to tell them where you are, and you told them this, that might be enough for them to find you. Um, they have a building name, and you know, usually that first digit indicates that you're on the first floor. 58 tells you the 58th room of the first floor of the Omni building. Um, but if they just rolled up to campus, would they be able to really find you directly? Or They might have to wander around. They might have to find a map that tells them you are here and then gives you another um, building that you're going to go find listed on the map. The point is, you need an origin to be able to describe position. You need to decide where you're starting, and then you can go from there. And so you're probably familiar with, with various coordinate systems. So if we just have the you know, traditional Cartesian plane, the XY coordinate system, we define 0, 0 at that intersection, a 0 coordinate for X, a 0 coordinate for Y, and then we can move over or upwards and downwards from there to define where we are. But if I just gave you a point, you know, 1, 2, if you don't know where 0, 0 is, you're not going to be able to find 1, 2. You need that origin. And, and similarly, you know, for a position on the globe, we have latitude and longitude. But the numbers for latitude and longitude would be meaningless without an origin. We have the equator and the, the meridian to define where you start to measure from. And that origin is crucial in defining position. And we'll see that that is what we're going to build upon to then later define things like velocity. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about position. Now, there's two words that we're going to use to describe position distance and displacement. And at first glance, they might seem very, very similar, um, but there are some very subtle but important differences in distance and displacement. So I've, I've drawn a, a simple little map here. We call these points A and B. And if we're going to travel between point A and B, in reality, we're probably going to take, you know, a hiking trail of sorts that doesn't necessarily go directly there. It might wander have turns, and eventually we get to point B. Now, the difference between distance and displacement is really how we get there. Distance is defined as the actual amount of ground covered. So if you were able to, you know, drop a string and slowly let it unwind with all its wiggles and curves, how much ground is covered answers the question of distance how far you actually walked to get from point A to point B is distance. Displacement is how much the position has changed. Or if you're asked the question of how much has the position changed, the answer is displacement. And displacement is a straight line, an arrow in fact, pointing from where you start to where you end. That tells you how your position has changed. It doesn't care where you went on your way there, it just wants to know what is the straight line distance, often referred to as maybe as the crow flies using, you know, idioms. Um, but these are two subtle differences, and the real difference is in their nomenclature. Um, our fancy, you know, mathematical jargon to describe these would be vector and scalar. See, a vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. Magnitude, you know, the amount, and direction, of course, tells you which way to go. Meanwhile, a scalar is simply just a quantity with some magnitude. It doesn't have any direction associated with it. So whenever we take this hiking trail, we can say we walk two miles. But we might not have actually ended up two miles from where we began. We might have gone further 
our distance might actually be greater than our displacement. And so if you, you tell someone, well, I started here and then walked two miles, you could be practically anywhere. I mean, obviously the straight two mile radius is the limit to that, but you could walk around in a circle, end up you know, back where you started, walk one mile out, one mile back. That's two miles, but you're right back where you started. Um, it doesn't really tell them any information other than how much ground you covered. If you really wanted to tell someone where you were, you would say, well, I started here and I went, you know, 1.8 miles and you could give them a direction. Maybe this is, if we had this on a, a true, you know, north is up kind of compass setting, you could say, oh, I went 1.8 miles at about, you know, 15 degrees north of east. Giving them an exact magnitude and an exact direction, they can then say, oh, well, here's where they started. There's a line, 1.8 eight miles and that's the perfect angle that, that matches, uh, uh, matches their direction heading and they'll know exactly where you are. You've told them both where you started, how far you went and in what direction and that's only one specific point that can match all those criteria. If you told them I am exactly 1.8 miles from where you started, well it could be in any direction. There's a circle upon which they know you would lie but you could have gone north, you could have gone south, could have gone east, west, but in fact there's only one direction, you know, 15 degrees north of east, 1.8 miles away from where I started. That is why we use displacement often in physics. There's only one, one single point that can match a specified displacement. So not only does the magnitude matter, but the direction matters as well. And we're going to be seeing vectors a lot today and understanding that they have direction as well as magnitude is very, very important to, to this chapter. All right, so let's just work one simple example discussing distance and displacement. So in this example, let's consider a, a little exercise for me. So let's say I jog one mile to the end of the road and then I jog back to my house. How much distance did I travel? Well, if we're talking about distance, it is the total ground covered. I went one mile to the end of the road. And if I go back, well, I have to cover that one mile back. And one plus one is two. I must have traveled two miles. That is how much ground went past me as I did all of my jogging. But if we ask what is my total displacement, the answer is actually zero miles. If we consider how my position changed, well, if we only look at where I started and where I ended, I started at my house and I ended at my house. If you don't pay attention to the journey, only, only how it begins and ends, you wouldn't notice any difference other than I'd probably be a little sweaty and tired by the end. Um, but in terms of my position, I'm exactly where I started, which means my position ultimately did not change. Um, and zero is actually a special vector. It doesn't have any direction because obviously you didn't go anywhere. It's called the null vector. Um, just a little extra jargon for you. We won't really worry too much about null vectors in, in this class, um, but they have some special rules when you get into um, more vector algebra. But anyway, I hope this is a, a quick intro video. Um, we will f um, follow this one up with um, speed and velocity, um, but hopefully this makes distance and displacement um, and the difference between the two of them quite clear. So see you guys soon and we will come back with velocity and speed.